What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now in this vid, as well as making a mess, I make these two marking knives. Walnut handles made from a plain blade. They're razor razor sharp. They're nice to hold in the hand. So there's a finger child top and bottom and on the side. So you can use it like a pencil grip and you can use a thumb and index finger grip. Feels nice in the hand. And it's a right and left handed version as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. And I just want to say thanks to everybody for all the support. I've just broken the 500 subscriber mark, which is awesome. So again, guys, thanks very much for the support and uh, more videos coming up. So enough talking now, let's make some knives. Let's do it. Right guys, let's start this project. Now, I'm gonna be using a plane blade out of this fateful block plane. It's an absolute terrible block plane. I could never get the blade to sit square on this thing, so this is gonna be our donor block plane. The rest of that can go in the bin. It's useless, so this will be the plane blade that we're gonna be using. A nice thing with this plane blade, it's already tempered and hardened, and you'll know if metal is tempered and hardened when you rub a foil across it. You can, you can hear that noise. It kind of has a high-pitched ring to it and the foil will kind of skip off it whereas back here you can hear the difference the foil immediately bites, bites into it and starts to remove that material pretty quickly but again up on the tempered part it just slides off it so the plan is is to split this down the middle and hopefully we'll get two marking knives out of it, one for left side, one for right side. I'll show you that in a minute. Here is my existing marking knife. This is one from Marples and it is terrible. Let's get the camera to focus on that. So if we can see the blade, it's really thin. It's so easy to damage. And it, it just bends and chips and breaks. So um, yeah, it's not great. Let's get rid of that. So first thing we want to do is mark this down the center, take it on the grinder and cut it down the middle. Let's do that. I'm just going to mark this with pencil. Uh, what is it? 35 mil wide. So we want to be 17 and a half, which is right there. Just get a rough center line on that then. Doesn't have to be perfect. I have no idea if this is going to work or not, but it's always fun to try things. So let's try and cut this in half with the grinder. Okay, that's our two pieces in half. Now I'm just going to take off these two pieces on the back that we don't need. So we'll just continue this line straight across. Again, don't have to be perfect. A scribe probably would be better here, but I only need a rough pencil line once I can see it. I can cut it. Okay, let's chop that. Okay, next thing we want to do is cut our blade. Now, I've no idea how far back this stuff is t tempered. Yeah. yeah, it seems like it's tempered back far enough, so we should be good. So I'm just going to mark the angle of my blade from this corner. Hopefully you can see that in line with this. And that's what I want to rough cut now on both of these knives. So we'll line that guy up with the edge of that. I 
that's going to be the angle of my cut for my two knives just like that right guys that's our two knives roughly cut out of our plain blade now i want to put a 20 degree um bevel in this blade so i want it to be nice and sharp nice and thin so a nice high angle so 20 degrees is what i'm going to put into it so i just cut a piece of ash this is a piece, just a, an ash block i took it to the miter saw cut it at 20 degrees and i'm going to clamp my knife to this block and uh, take it to the grinder and see if i can sand this down to 20 degrees so that is the plan let's try and do that now as I'm sanding this, I don't want it to get too hot because I have no means of tempering this blade again. So I don't want to heat it up so much that I make it brittle. And uh, yeah, so it'll be just nice and handy and we'll try and sand in this 20 degree bevel for our blade. Okay, so clamping it was a little bit difficult because of the angle. So what I'm going to do now is just use double-sided tape. Just always handy to have in your shop there we go i'll use our piece of flow glass just to get this nice and flat we'll go with this guy first so hopefully you can see what i'm at there stick him on he's nice and flat so now we have our knife stuck to our 20 degree block and we're nice and square here. So let's see if we can grind this thing. Okay, there we go. We have our 20 degrees cut into our knife now. Just taking time and making sure that we don't overheat this blade because I'm not tempering it again. So uh, yeah, we're just taking it down to a nice fine point. Camera, come on. Uh, you can just see that there. So I'm gonna finish it off on the sharpening system I have. So yeah, let's do the other one exactly like this now. It'll just be facing the opposite direction. Again, take your time. If you're not re-tempering the blade, you don't want to see any color changes in this blade when you're sanding it. So again, it's just a case of take your time. Okay, let's rock on. Right guys, we have our two handles clamped or epoxied on now. So um, I'm gonna start shaping these handles. I don't know if this five minute epoxy will be strong enough, so I might have to put pins through them. We'll see, but uh, yeah. So apparently the mic wasn't on for the last, I don't know how long, so uh, yeah, there's no sound up to this point. So I think I caught the fact that I've put 20 degree bevels on this. You saw me doing that on the sander. Don't let the steel get too hot because you will re-temper the blade and make it brittle. Um, so that's just something to be careful of. Take your time, do it slowly, don't let it get too hot. Again, these are just walnut handles. You probably saw me cut them out on the bandsaw again with no sound, but that's where we're at. So we have, like I say, our blanks, our handle blanks are just epoxied on now. So we're gonna start shaping these and we may have to put pins in them and then we will sharpen the blades and we're almost home and hosed. So let's do that. Okay guys, I think I'm gonna take a different approach here. I'm not too happy about how this epoxy is turning out. Turning out, if you can see, the camera will focus on that. I'm not overly happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these handles back off and I think I'm gonna take a block of walnut instead, drill a hole in it, put the tang of the this knife or this blade that we've made into that hole and epoxy it in that way so that we don't see any gaps 
front or back so I don't have to match the handle then to the shape of the steel if you know what I'm saying I think that's going to look and work out better so let's do that instead okay guys I have one done so I drilled two four mil holes down into this piece of walnut um, and then just put some epoxy on the blade on the tang of the blade and hammered it down into it um, so I'm going to do that again just to show you what I did so again it's only two four mil holes straight down into it two holes side by side and then just ream that out give us the depth we want go a small bit deeper come right to the end of the blade or to the end of the, the bit Right, just chop this on the bandsaw and we have our two knives in our blanks. A lot of carbon to do, but I think that's going to work out better, hopefully. And I think we'll just size these down a small bit on the bandsaw so we have less carbon to do. So this is where we're at with our two knives. It's two slightly different shaped handles, but uh, they're turning out not too bad. So we just have a lot of sanding to go now and tidy up these blades and put an edge on them. So let's get sanding. Right guys, I have the knives and the handles sanded to 120 grit now. I'm pretty happy with that. They don't need to go any more than that. Uh, once they feel good in hand, that's all that matters. So I need to put an edge on these now and I'm going to use the scary sharp sharpening system. If you guys watch my videos, you've seen me use this loads of times before. It's essentially just a piece of float glass with some 3M microfilm on it. Um, it goes from like 100 microns all the way down to something extremely ridiculous that the writing isn't even on it. The, it's so fine that to put ink on the paper would change um, the grit so they don't put any ink on it so i don't know what it gets down to but it gets down to something really ridiculous anyway and uh, yeah so i'm going to do this by hand so i'm just going to find the bevel and just work it and try and get a consistent edge on it by hand working my way through down through the grits so let's get a bit of honing oil on it and see if we can put a razor sharp edge on these things Let's take this guy first.
Hmm. That's going to be pretty sharp if I can get the grind right. So um, yeah, leave that with me, guys, and I shall get back to you. <laughs> right, guys, just to show you where we're at with polishing this blade, excuse my messy hands now, but as you can see, the initial grind was done on the sander and this secondary grind was done on the float glass. Now I could work this the whole grind if I wanted to. I could spend a couple of hours at it, but you can see the difference between the flow glass and the belt sander. The flow glass is perfectly flat. That's why the grind is working its way back up to this edge, but I'm from edge to edge now, and that's all that matters. And uh, I have a good polished edge on my knife. And as I'm using the knife over, over time, I will eventually grind it all out. So. That is good enough for now. Just do the paper test. Get a sheet of paper here just so you can see. That's uh, <laughs> plenty sharp. So let me do the other one now and we got to finish on these handles and we're almost home and dry. Right, we have a razor sharp edge on both of our knives now, so let's just treat the handles. And as you've probably seen me do 100 times before, I'm going to use one of my favorites, boiled linseed oil. Nice, quick, easy. Just rub it in. And that will help protect the handle. We can even do the blade with it. like that. Right, there we go. We have two new razor sharp marking knives that are made from a lot thicker steel than this um, useless hunk of junk. So that's gone and I have two good quality marking knives made from another hunk of junk uh, block plane. So it's nice to get two nice handmade tools from, from uh, some bad tools, which is great. So um, again, it's, it was all the steel was already pre-hardened so I didn't have to temper it if you're going to do that Make sure that you don't heat it up when you're grinding it because you will temper the steel again and make it brittle So just watch for that um, Yeah, just you saw how I stuck it into the walnut handles I put finger choils top and bottom so you can hold it with your thumb and index finger this way You can also hold it on the side and you can use a pencil grip as well So it's nice and comfortable. So just with the spindle sander um, we just put curves into the each side and top and bottom as well and it's a right and left handed version and we can use it right and left side so yeah that's it guys hopefully that video has been helpful for you you can make your own tools they're very very simple and the tempering process itself is very simple so if you do want to temper um, your own steel if you have some high carbon steel that's not tempered just get a blowtorch heat it up till it's cherry red test it with a magnet when it stops being magnetic dunk it in oil and then just put it in an oven at 200 degrees for a couple of hours just to um, take the brittleness out of it and you will have a nice blade edge sharpened on the sharpening system again you can use water stones diamond stones whatever you guys have to do it and uh, yeah that's it i have to tie up the shop now because as always i've made a mess so i'll catch you in the next one guys take it easy